So hi and welcome to another review and today we're going to be taking a look at the Quadraclix Rabbit mouse here or the RBT. So this mouse is designed with relaxation in mind here. It's designed not to get any excess pressure in your fingers and your tendons in your hand and that's why it's shaped in the way it is with these unique buttons. And we'll get into more detail as we go through this because we're going to be doing a full latency test with a 1000 FPS camera, some scales to weight, see what the weight is. Caliper obviously to measure every inch of it and we've got a force gauge meter as well as some other tests here to get a full understanding of this mouse and allow you to compare it in the charts against the other mice that I've been reviewing and then you get a good idea of where it sits and whether it's good for you or not. If you want to go back and check out all these statistics on my beardybob.com website and what I've done recently is I've added a top 10 section and in there you've got like the top 10 fastest mice I've reviewed for latency, top 10 fastest mice for glide and I'll be adding some more and if there's anything you want to see in there let me know in the comments and I'll look to add that as one of the top 10 as well. I've also revamped my shop and now there's some of the services are available that I now offer for mice modding and things like that and there'll be a lot more coming along so check those out as well. So Quadraclick sent this mouse out to me which is good of him so I can take a good look at it. But as you know this won't affect my review, I'll still give you my honest opinion. You can also look at the data as well. But if you want to buy this it's $80. I'll put some links in the description for it as I will do for everything else and it's certainly putting it in that middle to top premium market so you can expect a lot for that price so let's start off with the shape well as we said this is totally different here and i do like what they've done here they've certainly stepped outside the box they're not following the norm that you'd normally expect from mice manufacturers in what's quite a crowded market the main unique feature of this mouse is the buttons are activated from the rear and not from the front so you don't use the front of your finger you use the back of my finger I know that's just totally different and it does take a little bit of getting used to. It's got a nice rubber texture on the sides and the back here. It's probably one of the best I've had. It's a silicon and it does feel really, really good here. Top is a gloss black, which is a total fingerprint magnet. It's got a rear logo, which is a rabbit or RBT. It's RGB and it changes depending on what profile you're on set in the software for your DPI. It's got a two skate combo, one at the front, one at the rear. We're going to see how good they glide on the glide test. It's a six button configuration, so you've got your primary left and right mouse buttons, you've got a press down scroll wheel, you've got a DPI button, and you've also got a left and right side button on the left side of the mouse. The cable itself is around two meters and it's a braided cable, it's not a flex, it's not a sender cord or anything like that, this is a standard braided cable. It's a little bit rigid and we'll do some more tests later on to see how rigid. So look at the shape here in my 18 by 9 centimeter hand, or in my girlfriend's hand which is 16 by 7.5 centimeters. For me, it didn't work this shape. I just couldn't get used to using the back of my finger to press the button. And for me, it felt like a little bit awkward, but I'm sure over time someone could get used to that. My girlfriend was also saying when she was trying to use it, it's probably a little bit big for her hand, but for my hand, it was probably a good size. It's just a bit weird to try and get used to the shape. So this is built really well, this mouse. There is no squeaks. There's a few little rattles when you shake it. And if you hold down the scroll wheel, that still persists. So we'll find out any tear down. Overall, the build quality of this thing is solid. It is a really well-built mouse. Does it have any onboard memory? Well, the side buttons still don't work, but you can flick through the default DPI buttons if you wish to. You're still going to need the software, though, to configure it. So if you're not familiar with my measurements, there's a link in the description to a video that tells you how I take my measurements and what the acronyms mean, so then you have a better understanding before you get into this level of detail. So the first one here is movement. It's using a 1,000 FPS camera, and we're going to be using Rainbow Six. And the average movement for Rainbow Six was 29 milliseconds. This puts it in the middle of the pack, not bad. CSGO, the average was 23 milliseconds. Again, puts it in the middle of the pack. And for Kovac, it comes in at 23 milliseconds again. Again, a steady middle here from this mouse. So moving in button latency here in Rainbow Six, it came in at 67 milliseconds. This puts it towards the back here. In CSGO, it does 46 milliseconds. This puts it in the middle of the pack again. In Kovac, it's 32 milliseconds, the average. And this puts it at the front, which is a nice result here. So this mouse is slightly moving around a little bit in these statistics here. In Rainbow Six on the switch itself, which is a little bit awkward because the way this mouse is, but on the switch itself, 36 milliseconds, which puts in joint first. Interesting. In CSGO on the switch, it comes in at 38 milliseconds, which puts it in second place. So it's starting to get a little bit interesting here. I'm quite excited to see in the bump test how it competes with the M1K, which is the champion here, because this is starting to look like a quick mouse. And in Kovac on the button, it comes in again, 34 milliseconds and puts it in first. So the rabbit here is performing well. It's certainly got a quick trigger and you can tell that when you're pressing it in game because of the rear mechanism, there's very little travel. So getting into the sensor here, well, this uses the 3336 sensor, which is a cut down 3360 sensor. And for me, the sensor performed well. I had no issues with it. You can see here on these charts where it's a bit all over the show and that's purely because of the shape and me trying to get used to it rather than the sensor. 
it might slightly be adjusting some of the snapping here on the angles, but let me know in the comments what you think. In the slam test, the sensor performed great as well, no issues. Sensor location is 51 millimeters from the front, 61 millimeters from the rear, 31 millimeters from the left, 31 millimeters from the right. This puts the sensor all towards the front. So we move to Kovac here, that gives it an average though of sum of 82, final score of 62.1, and an accuracy of 71.2. This puts it at the bottom of my scores at the moment. I can say I was having some issues with how the shape is though. So how do these buttons feel? Because this is quite a significant part of this mouse. And for me, the left and right mouse button switches feel nice. It's using day use switches, which is different. We haven't tested these before and they feel nice to click. Certainly feel good on the rear of the mouse, even though it feels different, the switch itself does feel nice. So the side buttons are using 30 million Hirano switches, which are good switches, but the buttons on this for me are a little bit of a letdown on the side. There's too much movement in the middle of the buttons, like there's no support. And on the outer edges of the side buttons, it's solid. So there's quite a difference depending where you press it. And for me, I didn't particularly like that. I could do with some work in the next revision to improve that. The scroll wheel though feels nice. It's got a really, really short press, a bit like a G Pro wireless. There's no movement, no pre-trouble. It's a nice scroll click. So this is how the switches sound. So pre-travel and post-travel, while well, there's not much pre-travel in this, these switches are straight up against the button here. So it's really nicely done. There's probably a fraction of pre-travel, but to me, it's a really well-made switch and button combo. And there's a little bit of post-travel, but again, not too much on this mouse. So human benchmark, it comes in with an average of 176 milliseconds, which is good. It's certainly put in the middle of the pack here. No issues there. Button latency using PK Blood. The left one came in an average of 161, which puts it at the front of the pack. So again, these buttons are looking quick. And on the right button, it came an average of 150, which puts it in joint first. Again, a fast click on this rabbit. So clicks per second, while I was impressed, it comes in with 6.6 .6 clicks per second, which puts it at the top of my clicks per second. It shows you that the rear of your finger can be quite quick here. In fact, the quickest I'm able to get so far in the mice that I've tested. So the bump test, well, we're going to roll out the reigning champion, which is the M1K, which has just decimated anything it's come against. And the rabbit here is looking in a good position to beat this, or at least challenge it. In the first test, the M1K took the victory. And in the second test, again, the M1K took the victory again. So nothing can beat this reigning champion. The M1K is still there, even this rabbit, which is quick in other tests. So we're using the force gauge meter here to test these clicks. I'm going to do it a little bit different on this mouse because I should be using the front of it, but because it's reversed, we're going to be using the rear of the rabbit switch and using that as the front press to allow us to compare it to other mice. Otherwise it just wouldn't look right because of the way the buttons work on this rabbit. So the average force in grams required for the front left was 58. The middle was 78 and the rear was 269 grams. The right was 59 average on the front, 84 average in the middle and 271 average on the rear. That gives them an average on the left 135 grams and on the right 138 grams. This certainly puts it in the higher press force required compared to other mice. It is a little bit harder on the front or the rear as we say on this rabbit to other mice but because of the way you use your finger you don't notice that and it probably needs to be a little bit heavier so you don't accidentally press the switch anyway. For me it's quite effortless to press and on the very top of the mouse where it's near the scroll wheel at the front you wouldn't normally press there anyway hence it's quite hard to push down the switch. So moving to the side buttons, well the front average was 116 grams to press and the rear average was 97 grams. This to me puts them in the middle of the pack here, nothing too hard to press, nothing too soft to press. The scroll wheel press comes with an average of 175 grams, again a reasonably light click here given how close it is to the switch, so it was a nice press on the scroll wheel. No accidental clicks though, it's not too soft but it's nice. So the weight, well they reckon it comes at 140 grams, well, that's the weight I could find around on the internet. And there's no way it's at that. And if you look on the scales here, it comes in at 105 grams. So it's certainly the heaviest mouse we've tested in these tests. I've reviewed other mice that are heavier, but I haven't compared the statistics like we have, have here. And the rabbit now is the heaviest one we've tried, 105 grams, but to me, it doesn't feel too heavy. So moving on to the glide test here and the NSW was an average of 29 grams, NFW 41 grams, RSW 35 grams, and the RFW 40 grams. This gives it an average of 38 grams. So here after these results, it puts the rabbit as one of the slowest mice on the G640 in the test that we've done so far. 
I'd say the skates need a little bit of a rework. I like the idea of two of them, but they probably just need a little bit more size on them and perhaps slightly better PTFE as well. So the dimensions, while well, the length is 114 millimeters, the rear width is 62 millimeters, the middle top is 57, the middle middle including the button profile is 62 millimeters, middle bottom is 60 millimeters, front is 62 millimeters, the height on the rear is 28 millimeters, the height in the middle is 43 millimeters, and the height on the front is 35 millimeters. That means that the rabbit is the highest mouse we've got, but most of them are around 40 to 37, so it's not too high that you think your wrist is going to get snapped off. It's probably more of the natural level, like they mentioned when I was speaking to Quadruplex. You just got to get used to like how your fingers position on the buttons. The buttons in width are 22 millimeters, certainly one of the smallest buttons we've been reviewing so far. Scroll wheel thickness is 6.3 millimeters. The length of it is 24 millimeters long at an estimate, and we'll find the true length out in the teardown. For me, it's got a poor cable here. It could certainly do with some work. It comes in at three millimeters in thickness, and this is probably one of the weaker areas where they need to change it. Some people are fans of braided cables, some aren't, but this one is really stiff, from my opinion. Software, well, pet hate minor people don't provide it, but Quadruplex here provide it for the rabbit, which is good to see. It's quite basic. It does allow you to do things like reconfigure the buttons, which is essential. It allows you to set DPIs, it allows you to set some profiles up change some of the colors, change the vertical horizontal movement. So finishing here with my overall conclusion, I like what Quadruplex have done here with this mouse. It's stepping outside the box here. It's trying to help people who are suffering pain in their hands, which I know that's why they developed this because one of them was having some issues playing Dota and it was giving him pains in his hands and that's why he developed this mouse. So I kind of understand that. I think it's quite a learning curve to switch over to it. I certainly was struggling, but you can't teach old dogs new tricks, right? And I'm certainly a proof of that because I just couldn't get used to the rabbit. It's built really well, it's a thought out mouse, comes with software, but the shape is probably what's going to turn it for people. If you are having problems with some RSI in your hand or carpet tunnel or just pains in your hands in general, then this rabbit is certainly worth checking out. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my Baby Bob website. Got loads of stuff on there, and I'll see you all again in the next video. We've got a load coming, including some Model OD stuff. We've got the Noble 5 coming. We've got a lot coming. I just need to get through them. So, Bear with me and we'll see you all again soon. Catch you later. Bye bye.